Hello, welcome to this edition of Hardman Talk. I'm Keith Hiscott, the CEO of Hardman & Co. And I'm joined today by two speakers. My first guest is Annabelle Brody smith who is the Communications Director of the Association of Investment Companies, the industry body for investment companies. Annabelle's a veteran of the AIC, and we're very pleased to have you here today, Annabelle. I'm delighted to be here, Keith. Uh, my second guest is Ricardo Bindi. Ricardo works alongside me at Harbin & Co, uh, analysing investment companies. Welcome, Ricardo. Thank you. So we're here today to talk about the AIC's note from earlier in November, uh, entitled Investment Company Discounts Widest Since 2008. And Annabelle, for, for some viewers, they may be a bit confused about what a discount means. So can we just start with the concept of a discount? And it's one of the biggest differences between open-ended funds, commonly known as unit trusts, and investment companies. Um, can you explain what the discount is or what a premium is in some cases occasionally uh, uh, and, and what those differences are? Absolutely, Keith. Well, investment companies, otherwise known as investment trusts, are listed on the stock market. So they're companies like Marks & Spencers, for example. So we buy and sell their shares on the stock market at the share price. Now, uh, and if you buy uh, and the share price goes up, the reality is you've made money. But we can also value the underlying assets. So um, say I'm a fund manager and I add up the value of all my holdings and I divide them by the number of the shares then I get the net asset value per share. And what that's really telling me is the underlying value of this company, but I'm still buying and selling my shares at the share price. So if a trust is trading on a discount, that means the share price is lower than the net asset value. And I think it's easiest if I give you an example. So say the net asset value is 100p per share, but this share is trading at 90p, so I can buy at 90p, then we can say that's a 10% discount. Now, sometimes trust trade, their share prices are higher than the net asset value, perhaps they're very much in favor, very strong performing sector, um, and in that case, I'll give you another example. So, for example, if we had an investment trust and its share price is 100p, but the net asset value is 110p, then it would be trading on a 10% premium. Now, this is an important difference from open-ended funds, which are not companies, and, and therefore they trade at only at their net asset value. But obviously we think there are a lot of benefits for that, to that company structure. Annabelle, thank you for that. Could you also tell us something about the recent history of discounts? Absolutely. Well, actually discounts were relatively narrow at the end of 2021, everything was going well. The average discount was around 2.5%. And then sadly in 2022, the Ukraine war began. That war fueled inflation, high energy prices, high food prices. In addition, we had the pandemic had shut down the economy, lots of pent up demand. So rising inflation, rising interest rates. Um, at the end of December, 2022, the discount had widened out to 12%. And it has continued to widen this year with, with more interest rate rises and the very sad war in the Middle East recently. So at the end of October, the discount had widened out to 16.9%, which wow. is the highest, uh, widest month end discount since the financial crisis. Although I have to say, November has been a good month, markets have been up, and discounts have narrowed a bit in November to 12.3%. Mm -hmm. And has the sector ever traded at a premium to net asset value or have certain individual investment companies uh, traded at a premium historically or, or even more recently? Well, actually, I mean, the sector has traded at a premium, but not 
very often and it was actually a very slight premium but the end at the end of 2019 beginning of 2020 and we all knew what happened in 2020 with the pandemic and then things go into a very wide discount but actually at that period the sector was on a premium just a slight premium now we have trust trading on a premium now and i think this really shows you have to do your research. Uh, it depends on sentiment towards the sector. It depends on sentiment towards companies. So for example, with the rate rises, investors have been very interested in bonds. So our debt loan and bond sector is currently on a discount of 1.3%. We've got a trust in that sector, Invesco Bond Income Plus, on a premium of 1.3%. So it really does vary between sector to sector and company to company, depending on performance and you know sentiment towards that sector. So Annabelle, going back, I think you alluded to it in one of your previous answers, uh, but going back to the note, uh, why do you think there was such a large discount? Is it basically, I think, as you alluded to, the sentiment in the, in the general markets, be they fixed income or equity markets? Yeah, I mean, I think sentiment is an overwhelming factor. How do investors feel about investing? How do they feel about specific sectors? I mean, also, the interest rate rises have not been helpful. You know, stop, when you've got that going on, usually stock markets suffer. Some of our alternative investment company sectors, which have been generating income, obviously, when rate rises, investors can get um, that income elsewhere, perhaps some bonds or cash, perhaps slightly lower risk investments. Um, so all of those are factors. We've also had some very unhelpful cost disclosure regulation, which has made investment companies uh, falsely appear expenses when their costs haven't changed a jot, but that has been unhelpful. Now, I should emphasize that analysts and we think this represents a buying opportunity. You know, last month we had better inflation data, discounts coming in, but they're still historically quite wide. Um, uh, and Annabelle, you can split the field into broadly two types, can't you? Th those funds or those investment companies, I should say, that invest in listed assets, you know, listed shares and listed bonds. And the second type uh, invest in private assets, unlisted things like solar farms or debt or, or space companies. Um, is there a big difference in what's happened to the relationship to between the share price and NAV between those two types of funds? There really is a huge difference. What was happening uh, prior to 2020 is that those alternatives that we were talking about, infrastructure, renewable energy, they were mainly trading at a, at a premium or a very small discount. Um, and the equities and bond type companies, they were sort of trading on a discount of around 10 or so percent. Um, and what's happened is with these interest rate rises, things have really changed. So that now the alternatives discounts have really widened sort of between 15 to 20 percent. Um, and I can give you some examples. So, for example, property is on 23 percent discount, UK commercial property, uh, renewable energy on around an 18 percent discount. Um, and, but the equity trusts, actually, they're sort of probably around about 10 or so. Some of them are actually trading more narrowly. So, you know, UK equity income, which has been in demand, is on 4.4%. Uh, the global sector is on 11%. So we've really seen a reversal of those alternatives widening out. And, and the equities perhaps, you know, staying pretty stable, perhaps coming in a touch. Excellent. Thank you, Annabelle. And finally, one thing that's mentioned uh, in the note is um, activist investors. Uh, can you perhaps explain what you mean by that? Um, so for our viewers who perhaps uh, are not 100 percent sure. Yeah, well, activist investors are something that we, we get in the investment trust, investment company sector from time to time. And what they do is they identify an opportunity in a company 
Uh, they will take a position in that company. They usually push for some sort of change. I mean, ultimately, they quite often want to exit so they can sell their position in that company at a profit, or sometimes in extreme cases, even take control of a company. I mean, the reason why we've got the growing interest of activists at the moment is a function of the deep discounts, which companies trading and activists, activists are invest where they see value. Mm. So they may take, take, you know, target companies which are out of favor, but have got strong performance records or attractive assets. Um, and they are shareholders, so their views need to be properly considered. But we should bear in mind they often have a short-term agenda and their interests aren't necessarily aligned with long-term shareholders. Mm. Um, so, you know, for shareholders, if there's an activist in your trust, you've got to make sure that you have your say by using your vote in terms of the future direction of your company. Annabelle, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Annabelle. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed talking to you. So the AIC website has a wealth of uh, resources for investors. You can find much more detail there about discounts by sector, by individual investment company, et cetera. Uh, as always, thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like this video and join in the conversation wherever you're watching, and we'll see you next time.